your at-home congregation, the ones who have to stay home right now and watch from their couch instead of being in worship with you. Do they comment? Are they engaged in worship with you? Here are four best practices to make sure your live stream is as engaging as it can be. The ideas I'll present relate to your live stream regardless of your destination, regardless of your church size, regardless of the camera setup you might have. We're talking about connectivity, camera angles, sound, and lighting. These are the main things you should consider to make your live stream more worshipful. So as we talk about lighting, light your platform. Are you a church who likes to turn down the lights during worship? Light your platform. Light the front of the bodies of the people you have on the platform. Even if it's dark everywhere else in the building, make sure you have the ability with lights pointed in this direction to light your platform. Are you a church that likes to use wash lights across the back of your, of your platform? Light your platform. Are you a church that has a lot of natural light coming in? Light the platform. Natural light is beautiful and it's wonderful, but you need light on people's faces, on people's bodies, so that, so that the folks watching on the stream can be engaged. You don't want a fuzzy, a grainy, a low-lit, difficult-to-watch kind of stream, so lighting becomes one of those very important aspects of your live stream being more worshipful. Are you one of those churches that likes to use theatrical smoke? Stop. I'm just kidding. Light your platform. Smoke's going to create all kinds of diffraction. Um, it's difficult to deal with, but if that's you, if that's where you are, and that's what reaches the population you have, great. Go ahead and use it. You just got to be sure you can get some light onto the people that are there so that the folks who watch at home will be engaged and it will be worshipful for them. Even though there is only one real answer for lighting, and that is use it, it's really a whole lot more complex than just, than just that. I want to encourage you just to pay attention. If you see harsh shadows falling on someone, find a way to feel light from the other direction. If you have hot spots of light because your spotlights are too focused, go into your software or use your analog system of widening that spotlight out a little bit, soften it up a little bit so that your harsh shadows or your hot spots are minimized. If your pastor loves to wear a color that washes his face out, maybe buy him a men's warehouse gift card and encourage him to pick another color. The thing is, you recognize bad lighting when you see it. So don't use direct overhead lighting. Know that colored light makes skin look funky and smoke is bad for you. There, I said it. Here's a serious offer for you. If you need help, you have a question, leave a comment below. If you need to schedule a Zoom call, contact me through the channel email below. The second thing to consider when we're trying to make our live streams more worshipful and more engaging is sound. There's the adage for all streaming platforms, people will forgive bad video, but they will not forgive bad sound. Making sure that sound is quality involves mm, a little bit of effort. Now, you may be in a church where you have such a complex system that you need to have your own board and your own team to do your live stream sound. It seems like the more complex things get up here, the more complex things are going out on the stream. And it's warranted to have a separate board to mix that live stream sound with. It's warranted to have a, a separate tech to make sure that happens, and it happens well every week because that is such an important part of our worship services these days. But I just happen to know that a lot of you who watch this video will be in smaller churches and you don't have a whole lot going on up here. You don't have a, another board to run your stream sound through and you don't have another tech to put, on that, put, to put on that project. So it is acceptable and it can be quality sound just to run your mixed house sound out of the back of your board and into one of your cameras. That's going to give you, most of the time, a well-mixed quality sound for your stream. 
Now, if that's you and you're running out of your headphone jack or you're running out of maybe a main balanced output, something like that on the, the back of your board, you'll run that into one of your cameras. And I want to encourage you to go ahead and make an investment there. Instead of trying to cable that from the board to where you put your camera so that you don't have this, uh, this perceived necessity of keeping the camera close to the board, which is almost always at the very back of the church, Go ahead and buy a, a wireless microphone set up like a Comica or a Rode Wireless Go or a Hollyland Lark so that you can put the, put the microphone end plugged into the soundboard at the sound booth and you can put the receiver, uh, yeah, the receiver end plugged into your camera wherever it needs to be and that will keep you untethered. That will keep you free to put your cameras wherever they might need to be in your auditorium for the best possible view. If you're going to use that mixed house sound for your live stream, just make sure that during sound check, before church starts on Sunday morning or Sunday night or whatever time you do your services, make sure your techs are in the habit of checking that sound stream before it goes out. Just monitor it a little bit and make sure that what is in the house is fit for what's going out of the stream and your folks at home will have an enjoyable, engaging worship experience wherever they are. Okay, it's confession time. I'm actually not doing either of these things in my church right now. I don't have a separate soundboard, a separate sound tech for my live stream sound. I don't run sound out of the back of my sound booth into one of my cameras for mixed house sound on my stream. I actually do not even have a sound system in this church right now. Ours has died. Now there's pieces still sitting here and, and we're using them really just as mounts for something else. But right now, until the installer can get here to put our new sound system in, for the last few weeks and for the next few weeks, we're in that place where I'm having to find this workaround. And the workaround I have found is to take my Hollyland Lark system, put my put my receiver at one of my Mevo cameras. I run a three Mevo system. I have one mounted here, one mounted here, and the one I'm talking to now. In that system, I just I take my receiver for the Hollyland Lark, and because it gives me the ability to have individual gain control for each of its microphones, I can place those microphones here and here for each of my vocalists, guitarists, run that sound through one of my cameras. I use the built-in microphones from the other two cameras to pick up house sound and to pick up piano and percussion sound. And I'm having a better stream sound right now than I've had in a long time. It's crazy, I know, go figure. The next thing that we want to consider in making our stream more engaging is camera angles and camera placement. When I say camera angles, really right now what I'm talking about is the level height of your cameras. And what I want to push everybody toward is making sure your cameras are eye level. Now this camera that I'm talking to right now is about eye level. It's actually just a little bit higher than eye level. And the camera that I'm talking to here is eye level, but it's just a little bit lower than eye level. Either one of those is fine. It doesn't have to be, what would this, this, this would be 5 foot 11 and a half right here to get me to 6'2 here maybe, right? It doesn't have to be to the quarter inch. It just needs to be in that range where it's eye level. That camera is about eye level. That camera would be about eye level if it were installed right now. We want to make sure that when we place our cameras, we're not placing it at the pew in the front so that it's out of the way because when we do that we're going to give everybody every week that watches at home we're going to give them a nostril shot of their pastor and it won't be flattering at all and I don't want to I'm not in that kind of church but if you are I don't want to mount my Sony camcorder that has a great 30x zoom I can put anywhere in, in a church I don't want to put it in the balcony way up there and give me this top down shot because it's going to highlight my bald spot and that won't be flattering at all either so Let's keep our cameras at eye level when we're getting our live stream up and running and the folks who are at home will engage, they will worship, and they will be blessed because of your efforts in setting up your live stream. Now the other one is actually camera placement or angles in relation to your platform. Let's make sure that when we're doing our camera angles, our camera placement, 
that we pay attention to what's going on behind us, okay? There for a while here at this church, I had a camera angled so that the person who stood here from that camera angle was catching that wreath in fall colors. It looked like his hair was on fire. You've seen the memes. You know what I'm talking about. Just be aware of camera placements, those angles that we have, so that the things that are behind them are not distracting. Uh, I unfortunately have a very bright light coming across on this shot. I can't do anything about it, so I just try to keep as tight a shot as I can on the pulpit here or on the, the guys who are leading worship here, and, and we just deal with the light that's behind it. But, uh, but I make sure their face can be seen, and I make sure it's not uh, washing us out in any way whenever I, put, I use that camera angle. And the last piece of creating an engaging, worshipful live stream is connectivity. And I know that's the unseen part. Nobody ever sees what's going on with connectivity. It's sometimes one of the most frustrating parts as well because if it doesn't work, it just doesn't work. You can give all the reasons, uh, make all the excuses you, you want to, but if it doesn't work, folks are disappointed. And connectivity is most often the thing that will kill that live stream so let's talk about the two pieces of connectivity every church needs to deal with. We need to make sure the connection coming into the church from our internet service provider is going to give us 10 megabits per second upload speed. The way things are now, and, and the, the ability of all of our cameras, PZT cameras, that Sony cam we talked about, the Mevo, whether you're just iPhone streaming, all of these can stream it at, at a high definition rate. They need bandwidth going out of the building. They need upload speed. So 10 megabits is our threshold. And if you can't get to the 10 megabit threshold, you might consider going another route. If there's another service provider in your area, ask them, hey, the ones I have now won't provision me for this speed. Will you? give my church at least 10 megabits per second upload so that I can get my stream out. That's what I did for the internet service provider here. I was stuck around three or four megabits per second up and I called the guys uh, at the local office here and I said, hey, I, I need some help. I know I'm kind of far away from the hub and, and I'm probably at the end of the line, but I really need more provision for upload speed. And they came and cranked me up to right at 10 megabits per second. It's the maximum they can give me as far away as I, as I am from their switch or their hub, whatever it is. But, but it worked, and I was able to get so that I can have a reliable 1080 stream just about every Sunday. Every now and then I'll get a freeze or a glitch because of the connectivity issue that I have there. But it's almost always a smooth stream on Sunday mornings. Upload speed being the first part of connectivity. The second part of connectivity is the network that you use inside your building. Once you get the connection here, the network that handles it needs to be fast. It also needs to be locked down. You need to create a not for congregational use network in your building. You need to be able to put your cameras and your streaming device, whether it's an iPad or a computer or even it's just your cell phone, you need to be able to put that on its own network. You'll have much less connectivity issues. You'll be much more reliable in getting your stream out every week if you will create your own network inside the building that is not the ISP's modem. Go ahead and run from the ISP's modem out with, with uh, Ethernet cable to another router switch, whatever you want to use, and then it is preferable to wire all your cameras and all your devices that will be used in the live stream. That way you don't have issues with a wireless connection breaking somewhere. The wired connection is the way to go. In addition to that, it would be wise to create a quality of service rule on either your modem or your router switch device. If that device can handle a quality of service rule, when you go into the administrative settings on that device, set a quality of service rule so that your streaming network has, say, 90 or 95% of your bandwidth during the time you're going to stream. In my church, I have preferences built into the mesh network that is here for public consumption. We have one ISP line coming in. We have one set of, of bandwidth coming in. But I've broken that up into a streaming network and then to a public use network that... Um, the public use network is for Sunday school because we have a couple of classes that do Zoom classes and they need bandwidth going out 
from 9.30 to 10.15 or so. And then I need bandwidth for the stream going out from 10.30 until at 11.45 or so. We've set those quality of service rules and we've set that preference for the equipment that's attached to those networks so that they get the bandwidth they need when they need it. Everybody else, if they connect to our guest network, they live on about 5% of what our bandwidth is, whether up or down. And 5% will let a iMessage float in or out. 5% is enough that if, uh, if someone's trying to get a hold of someone, they can. Of course, we have cellular connection, and most folks just leave that on anyway. But for anyone that doesn't and they need the Wi-Fi to work, there's just enough for them to be able to with that quality of service rule, with that preference that I have for the equipment on the network, and it works really well for us where we are. One more thing about your internet service provider. They're going to want to wow you in the cards they send in the mail and the advertisements they have on television by saying, we'll give you up to... 200 megabits per second download speed. And I'm here to tell you that's about as useless as poop on a pump handle for a Sunday morning stream. You don't need download speed. You need upload speed, and it needs to be as close to 10 megabits per second as you can possibly get it. Because if you're streaming at 1080, most of the time you're going to need about 6 megabits per second of actual stream. And if anybody else is, is able to get on that or any other traffic that happens there, 6 is about a good spot with a 10 megabit uh, speed test. I know that with the coming NDI connections that we have available to us through ProPresenter 7 or through OBS, HEVC is going to be the new standard. It's not there yet. It's being tested and there are, there are, there are some devices that are beginning to use HEVC and it actually cuts in half the bandwidth requirements which will ease the congestion on your internal network. It will also ease what you are needing to send out of here as far as bandwidth. But un until we get there, um, we're, we need that 10 megabit per second from the company because we're going to be streaming at 6 and the overhead is just necessary. Here's what that network might look like. From your ISP modem, Ethernet cable to another router or switch. From that router or switch, Ethernet cable to your streaming computer. The streaming computer will be receiving video from your camera or cameras likely through HDMI cables and then on that streaming computer you will use OBS or ProPresenter 7 or your favorite streaming software to send your signal, your video, out to your preferred platform so that the folks at home will have an engaging worshipful time with you. It may also look like your ISP's modem, Ethernet cable to your router or switch, from your router or switch to your Mevo cameras, which can Ethernet directly into each of them. You can then run your iPad that control or, or iPhone that controls each of those to send out to your desired streaming platform. You can Ethernet that back to your switch or router as well if you have the adapter that goes into your USB-C USB port or your lightning port, and that will make sure everything is wired even on a Mevo system.